Hi there, it's me, Scott. Still, I feel like I haven't streamed in a hundred years, but I think it's been a week, less than a week, five days, I don't know. Anyway, what has happened? The thing last week was that Stitch, Stitch? No, Twitch contest ended, and I got an honorable mention, which is fine, it's great. I got some money, and I, I'm, it's already spent. I'm already getting a fancy new chair, and that's, uh, What's that, right? So what am I gonna do today? I've been thinking about this um, for a minute. I should probably be sure that everything works. It looks like I have audio, microphone, all that stuff. Life features is outraged in the channel. I appreciate that. I appreciate the outrage. I feel like I've adjusted my camera and monitors a little bit and it feels a little off. Like maybe the camera needs to be a little closer. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I, don't know, I don't really know what to do with heat at this point. I don't quite know what to do. The mic is a little lower. Is this better? How's this? Can you hear me better now? Hello, life is yours. Good. Yeah. This is good. <laughs> um, it's a very broadcasty way to use a microphone. Um, yeah, I mean, the monitor's a little... I had monitor this dual monitor arm mount thing and then for a while i decided it was hurting my neck so then i just put it back on put the monitors back on their normal stands until i could get what i felt like was a good position then i tried to rematch that position and then i made this little mount for the camera yesterday i think i screwed it up i don't know maybe it's a little too high i think the camera needs to come forward slightly i know you can see the lamp now this is all it's all big news uh oh did my stream die Wait, what happened? Did the stream die? Are you paying your respects to my dead stream? I don't even know what you're talking about. Life is yours. Anyway, here's the thing. That MongoDB contest is going on, right? Um, MongoDB World 19. And even though it sounds like the way they're judging it, it sounds like there's some... Some nonsense there, according to Draclan. I didn't really read the rules very closely. Oh, will be decided by an audience vote at MongoDB World. I thought it was decided by an audience vote on DevPost. So that is a little more legit, I guess. So the top three get to fly there, but only one person wins the money. What do the other people get? They just get to stay at a hotel, go to New York City. I'll take a trip to New York City. It seems a little weird though to like not Fly everybody. I don't know, man. One person gets the 10 G's. I did something like this once with a... Uh... Do you think I'm hosting? I don't think I'm hosting anyone. That would be weird. Hosting while broadcasting. I see me when I go to my channel. That looks like me. Hello, it's me. Maybe uh, Twitch is confused. So anyway, the deal is this. I did a thing uh, a few years ago for a game contest where I got to go to New York City and I won that time. I won 10 Gs. Maybe it'll. Ha maybe I should do this again. Back now? That's weird. I don't know what's going on with Twitch. Anyway, I've been thinking about what I want to do with this and I've been struggling because I think I mentioned this before, but I used to once upon a time do like database administration and I feel like I just kind of have a mental block about it where I just never want to deal with databases ever again but I am kind of interested in Stitch because it is this like super serverless kind of business um, and so I thought maybe just to start wrapping my head around it a little bit um, I would just on stream struggle with it, try to figure it out because that's always fun to watch, right? Uh, and what I was thinking was we would do something where we would just, I'm assuming this is possible. We would like hit a stitch function and I'm assuming we can get the IP address from that of whoever's hitting it. And then we will stick that IP address in a Mongo uh, database almost a table but it's not a table and then we will have some others then we'll have a stitch trigger 
that will look, will watch for that, that will do a geolocation lookup on a free API. And then that will repopulate the database and then fire another trigger that does something with that data. I don't know. Like Firebase, I, I think there's some, there's some, I think there's some overlap with Firebase. I don't have a lot of experience with Firebase, um, but in like, yeah, the idea of being like serverless. Although the thing about Firebase is I feel like any kind of logic has to be uploaded to the front end, at least when I looked at it, which has been a little while. Like it seemed like if you actually wanted to have brains with Firebase, it all the brains always had to be on the front end and the back end was just kind of a data store. And, and then maybe it could send off like notifications to do things, but this maybe, I don't know, maybe the overlap is totally the same, but this feels a little bit more like I can do specific things with the functions and triggers. Um, but that is coming from a person who has very little experience with. A front end and no back end. Well, in this case, Stitch, Stitch is the back end. And it's all, this reminds me, like I used to do stuff like this with SQL Server years ago where you could write with uh, MySQL to write like various triggers and stuff, but I never had those triggers just arbitrarily execute stuff in the outside world. I don't think, maybe I did. Maybe sometimes I had it execute a fun shell function or whatever, um, but it seems kind of cool. So how does it work? get started for free. Maybe I'll just probably should have signed up for this off stream. I feel like I'm shorter. I feel like this is a problem. I feel like the camera needs to go like this just a little bit. Is that better? Draclin, hello. Welcome to Stitch. Welcome to me signing up. Oh, freaking password rules. I'm gonna try to generate a password that's great. And then it's gonna be like, no, that's not a good enough password. Have the mount a bit lower? I already lowered it a little bit. It's my new mount thing. I'd have to put, I think I maybe want to build an arm um, to come off of the uh, the little dude. I could still mount it a little lower. I got like maybe an extra inch. Um, password generator. Your password, my password doesn't match the criteria. I hate it. Because it doesn't have any numbers in it. Don't tell me how to make my password. I tell you. I tell you how to make passwords, Mongo. You don't tell me. So I don't really know. Uh, one, two, three comes in a password. It really is like all I literally all I did was take the password that I'd already generated and then just mashed some numbers onto the end of it and stuck it in one password. Okay, so we want. Uh, I do not know how any of this works. But it doesn't seem very complicated. I could have a basic blog, or a dashboard, or a to-do web app. Let's see, let's look at the basic blog. I think so, I think Stitch, I mean, you still, whatever it is, you still have, whatever they call it, Atlas, is it? Like, Stitch still sits on top of Atlas, so Atlas is still a separate thing, um, and then, Stitches gives you the serverless. It's like fire. Life is yours. <laughs> uh, it gives you the ability to run code on that are, that's uh, like trigger trigger based code when you add something to the database, like this. And then it also gives you functions, um, seemingly to run arbitrarily. And it also does static file hosting. 
a permanent website. Well, it does static file hosting in here somewhere, right? I think. Static hosting. Is it node based? No. I don't think so. I mean, the functions, well, I don't know exactly. Uh, it seems to be JavaScript based, but I don't know about Node specifically. I'm gonna use Node, or I'm gonna, I mean, maybe I'm not. All right, we're gonna go to MongoDB Atlas and we're gonna make a new application Great. Yeah. That's kind of interesting that they sit on top of multiple providers. So, oh look, a free tier in Oregon. M0 shared RAM. This looks great. Free. It's free. I guess, I mean, I don't know, the requirements seem pretty loose, like you could just, seems like you could have whatever other architecture you want, as long as somehow it overlaps with um, Mongo, one of the things from that list of Mongo. Should I do it? Can I do this in glitch? That'd be kind of cool. Well, but I mean, you just saw it. it's not even exactly competition because like, it's weird because there's all the, uh, you know, there's, I feel like that narrative has been in the news lately of like DynamoDB or whatever Amazon's is versus Mongo and all the battling. But you just saw when I created a cluster, the first thing it asked me is like, where do I want it? And I, you can run it on Amazon servers, Google servers or Microsoft servers. So like under the hood somewhere is still one of these, one of the three big, cloud platform providers. So, I mean, I'm still using AWS technically, I guess. What happened to my cluster? Is it done? Is it born? Should I have given it a name? Other than cluster zero. Project zero, Scott's organization. These are very good names. This project's called Worldwide. I don't know what any of this means. That's kind of cool. You can tie into alerty kind of stuff. Webhooks. Ooh, cool. I like this. That makes it, I mean, I don't know. Now that we I understand webhooks from all that Twitch stuff that I didn't really like their implementation, but it seems like an easy way to get stuff done. That a dog. Put the chat on stream, but if they would just watch it on Twitch, they can still see the chat, right? Beanstalk? Beanstalk's a pretty good name. It is kind of, because it is a fairy tale, because it's really complicated. Man, I did not really enjoy Elastic Beanstalk. I would maybe personally recommend going somewhere else, but good luck to you. Okay, what am I doing? What do I? What am I even doing? I made a thing. Is this this? What is the Stitch UI? 
Stitch apps. Create a new application worldwide. Okay, I don't know. Well, I'm sure we'll delete this before actually trying to do anything with it. My issue with it, because it's it's really, um, you know the Microsoft thing that they always do with new versions of Windows, where all the old stuff is still there, they just slam some new thing on top of it. So it's like, you get like, oh man, here's, here's Windows 10 settings. Just what you need, it's all brand new, it's all settings. But then really you realize like, well, actually I still need some stuff that's like, you know, in control panel. Or I really need like whatever that MS config, you know, where there's just like, it's just stuff on top of stuff on top of stuff on top of stuff. Um, and there's the illusion of sort of simplicity, but it's really just like layers upon layers and la upon layers. That's kind of what I felt Elastic Theme Shock was. Lorian, how's it going? You don't need to alert to say hello. I will look at chat periodically. Well, I don't know that anybody necessarily has that solved, except for if you just need the tightest deployment somewhere like Heroku or somewhere like that, that's like, hey, give us, okay, stop using, I'm turning off alert. You people are abusing it. You abusers. Um, where, uh, you know, if you just like, I have some code and I need to deploy that code, I think there's easier ways to do it than these, than these uh, cloud platforms. I'm gonna make it where only Draclum can alert. Uh, let's see. So, no, that's the biggest thing. Yeah, if I switch scenes, that was the whole purpose, is if I like forgot to switch scenes, which I do relatively often. This is a test of the emergency alert system uh, every uh, every Tuesday at 1.49 p.m. Pacific time. Um, we do one test here just to make sure it works. It works great. Uh, okay, now what are we doing? Maybe I should make it where you have to have multiple badges to uh, to be able to use alert. I want Draclin to look like like uh, I want that like what's that image? That fake image? I think these are fake, but these North Korean generals just covered in medals. That's what I want Draclin's username to look like in the channel. But I think this is a this is a doctored image. I'm pretty sure, right? False. I mean, that's still a lot of metals. Even without photoshopping the extra ones. It's a lot of metals. Though metals on the pants kind of give it away. My brother has metals like that. Okay, uh, anonymous authentication. We're only, I'm like not even to step two yet because I keep getting distracted. Anonymous authentication, yes. Are we starting with the comments before the that seemed weird wait did we like what what happened here <laughs> oh it's a blog commenting system okay I was confused they could have made that more clear in the title I was like why are we
Okay. Right, now we gotta go back to Mongo to be Alice. No, in the Stitch UI. Okay, this is already confusing. Go to Stitch. I should have given these different names. MongoDB clusters, it says here, not Atlas. But I'm going to assume that this is what they're talking about. <clears throat> OK, let's add a collection. The database name. What's this database called? Call everything worldwide until I know what anything means. So users can read. Uh, I guess we want no. Wait, why didn't it? Excuse me. I have to click down here. Everybody make a cluster. Can we uh, cluster our clusters? No template. Add collection. Permissions. Read and write for the default role. Save. So weird to me that we don't have to like actually define fields here. Or do we do that later? Let's use Stitch with Glitch while streaming on Twitch. How does that sound? Sounds good. That's how it sounds. Sounds great. No long running functions, 60 seconds execution time. That seems reasonable. Do you need something to churn longer than that? You can do that on, um, like Heroku will give you uh, worker threads that can run like that, and AWS has some kind of worker kind of things. Okay, what are we doing here? We need to, I don't really want to do this actually though. I just want to hit some kind of webhook and cause a thing to happen. I don't really want to have to create a connection. That's to get them. Submitting the comments. Draclin, thank you for doing that. Look, the, the, uh... Draclin, you've gifted a sub to life is yours. What a, what a gentleman and a scholar. Yeah, there's a bug there. Let's fix that real fast while we're on glitch. You, you two, you two adorable, you two, you two crazy kids. Um, okay, so yeah, maybe we fix that while we're at it. What's going on? Bot made this, edit. That's a front end problem. Probably. So that was on a gifted sub. Where's the code for that? Message param sender count. That's weird. I thought I understood that to be a number. Boolean or string. The count of gift subs the sender has sent. Oh my gosh, a bit. Thank you for the bit. Am I allowed emo- I think so. I think I can make several icons or emoticons. Oh, Draclan, look at all of the- You look amazing. Yeah, 
Yep. 25,000 bits, that sounds fair. Why is, this sounds uh, kind of asinine. What are they doing here? What is this syntax? What is that syntax? How am I going to even search for it? Ah. I've never used this operator before. Oh. It's just floor. Lorian, why are you crying? Weird thing. So are they using that as a way to turn true into one? Seems like a weird thing to do. Let's just steal that code and see what, see what it does. Curious. Like, is this doing a floor on a Boolean? Does that seem weird? I'm assuming it's going to be the same problem down here. So we may as well just prepare for that assumption. I've never seen this particular syntax. It's kind of weird. I mean, it seems like a little shaky, you know, like to uh, I, this this code does not read clearly, you know, like this is this is I would call this kind of bad self-documenting code um, because just looking at that, I did one. This just seems insane that it's either false or true or a string representing an integer. I think that's what I'm reading this to mean, which seems like a really weird thing to send. Like, why would you just not always send this as an int? But it's false or true or two, three, four, five. Is that what I'm reading here? That's what it seems to be, um, which I don't like that to start with. And then this as the solution for that which is like, well, round, round, true to one. It's like a weird thing to do. And it's so hard to search for. That's another reason I don't like that very much. Like, feels kind of gross. Feels like a like a some kind of shorthand optimization that is not actually a shorthand. Like reading in this and looking at um, yeah, math floor improved readability. I would say that. Do you like that noise? Do you know what that noise is from, Lorian? It's from Metal Gear Solid. You should play all the Metal Gear Solid games. Metal Gear Solid 5 is one of my favorite games of all time. But I think that sound has been... I might even go back to the... Um, what is that machine called? Um, what was the computer called that Metal Gear came out on? Why can't I remember it? MSX. This machine. 
But I don't, I can't actually remember if that alert sound is in the MSX version. I don't know. It might take a minute to uh, to pin that down. Who's distra- No, I'm not distracted. Uh, I was fixing a bug in a way that I don't like, but we'll just let's just keep that code because it's straight from Twitch for now, and let's get on with our lives. Um, I mean, I don't like this that some parameters are crammed inside. I don't know. I don't know Twitch. All these pieces of the Twitch API seem like hot glued together. Okay, what are we actually trying to do here? What does add comment do? So I, I don't want to do this though. I want to do it with a like a web hook, kind of. But maybe that's more complicated than it needs to be to start with. Well, I, no, I think I need to because that's like the trick. Um, but I want to call it though. Here's what, here's what I want. I want, I want a URL provided by Mongo that I can hit that URL and a function will be run and it will know my IP address already based on the uh, query. Does that make sense? So like I want some server side code to run, um, by being called on a URL. I don't actually know if you can do that. You feel bullied. You're bullying me by alerting all the time. I feel bullied. Um, let's see. Incoming web hooks and triggers. Are we going to jail? Everybody's going to jail. Okay, so here's the thing. We want to make a function. Can I do this? Is the thing I want possible? Call a function from another function, from a JSON expression, from a client application. So, and maybe the thing I want to do is not actually the way you're supposed to do this. Maybe maybe the thing I'm imagining is just not possible. Like there'll be a payload, but I, I wanna know the IP address in here, which you would normally say like, I would need a request. But in this case, it looks like there's just the, the webhook payload, like what came in from the client or from like the calling service and um, and then the response to write out. So this seems to maybe not provide the pieces I want. Well, that's not cool. I mean, there's another option here where we use um, People would have to opt in, like the browser geolocation stuff, and then people would have to agree to do it. 
and then just give me their actual real location. I would kind of prefer to not to do that because I sort of don't want people's actual real location. Maybe I could um, store it in with lower accu accuracy, just round off some decimals. We want like the request IP address. I just don't know if you can actually have that. What are we doing over here? I'm having a Christopher Lloyd party. <laughs> Very good. It's the official. Oh no, I saw an advertisement. Okay, so, well, lame. I mean, this slightly defeats the purpose of what I was gonna do today. I also don't have a ton of time. I have a meeting in two hours. So I was, I guess what I was hoping is that I could get a webhook function that would have the payload as well as um, a response. I, as well as a request and a response. Payload signature. So that's like JWT stuff, I would guess. I mean, I don't think that's too crazy. Like the, I, it, it, it already gives me the ability to craft a response in a very node-like way. So I just sort of assumed that there would also be a request associated with it. Um, which like talks about requests here. Maybe there's already something in the payload. So like our webhook would be whatever. We'd sign it and then have a message. You could also get an query string parameter like this. And the response, you can set the body, set the, you, know, you can set all the stuff. What's on the response? Like, you can't do very. Does the request just not have uh, some structured. some like existing uh, state to it, you know? Well, I mean, if I was gonna do this like an express, I would have an express um, route, I guess, that would have a request and that request would tell me stuff like the client IP and so on. And then it would have a response and then I would modify that and send out the response and that's what would go to the client. So. I had assumed that that would be the case here, even though it seems to not quite be the case. You do get incoming data, but it's, I think it's just the payload. And then you have the response that you craft that goes out. So it's very similar to Express, um, seemingly. But the thing that I'm just, that, that doesn't seem very clear about, or doesn't seem very clear is the uh, additional information about HTTP service actions. and uh, maybe. Oh, that's, that's outside though. So that's to talk elsewhere. We can do all this stuff, yeah. But I wanna know about the parameters that come into, that come in. But it seemed like looking at that example that all that comes in is whatever payload was attached. Um, I mean, am I just missing this part of the documentation? I feel like I'm, 
going in circles here. Created and now we have a webhook. Okay. Respond with result. That's who to execute as. This is how we will validate the request, but can I have the request? Okay, here's what we want. This is an eJSON representation of the incoming request payload. The contents of the payload document will vary depending on the service for a description of the payload object for specifics to receive that service. So this is not what I want, unfortunately. I don't want just the payload. I want like everything about the request. But I know I, okay, here's why they don't do that. Um, because in the scenario that this is built for, that would be like some third party APIs servers, right? It would be like the IP address of Twilio or whatever. So I think that's why they do not do it. STDL, hmm, I don't know. That doesn't sound so great. Uh, something, something about it. Okay, so this is makes sense, but isn't ideal. So what I was trying to do is just find a shortcut to easily get somebody's IP address from this. Um, but I may not get it. That may not be the way to do this. Because I was going to do that and then try to use webhooks to call some geolocation API service. Uh, just, you know, because because that seemed like a way to do a thing. But maybe external services is not really what we want. Like, I, what I would like to know is I would like to know about the user injecting the data, basically. And the problem is that the client, an individual client, just may not know its IP address. There's ways for the client to get its IP address, but in general, you can't really count on any device knowing its actual IP address. I am, I don't know exactly what I'm making yet, but I think it might be use some geolocation. Yeah, Life is Yours sent me a weird website the other day that showed my IP address at the bottom of the page. It was really awesome. It was just what I wanted everyone to see for no reason at all. It like, what was that? What was even was that site, Life is Yours? Like that had zero reason to talk about my IP address. It just did it in the footer. I wonder if a trigger can know that. I wonder if a trigger, I don't think so. Cause I think a trigger doesn't know, I would assume that the trigger kind of happens after something is inserted and doesn't really know about the uh, the user that is inserting it. So I kind of think we just can't do this thing that I'm imagining. That is my, that's my theory. And that's okay, we'll come up with a different way. Okay, so then we just need to do it a bit more like this. We need to actually get the nonsense and we want to actually do this. And then we will ask for, um, how do we know all this stuff? Like where does DB come from? Is that, def do I, is that defined in this? How do we initialize this? All this business. What just happened? What were all these 100 bits, Strackland? Thank you. Look at that beautiful throbbing heart. It's mildly creepy. I know my subscriber to viewer. Oh yeah, I have. I, I don't have a lot of viewers, but I have very good loyal viewers. Appreciate that. Yeah, that heart. I mean, it's kind of cute. I don't think I've ever seen that particular heart before. It's kind of creeped me out a little bit. I think I do need to add, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what to do with heat at this point. Here's what I would like to do with heat. 
I'm already have like after this month I will have already paid like 10% of my winnings. Yeah, more than that really. Probably more than my after-tax winnings. Probably 10% will have gone to AWS. So I kind of want to get it off AWS and then maybe add a bit bits support in like whatever the lightest way. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So what I'm thinking is that uh, I would just do it with time where you would just buy an amount of time to uh, life is yours. Can I hire you and pay you in bits? The uh, because then all we have to do is on the Redis server, just throw in an entry that says, hey, this person is valid for this amount of time and just always check against that. And that would be, yeah, I'll pay him in access to heat. Very good. And then he can click my butt when I set up a camera in the shower um, in my frog costume. I think Solid Snake had a frog hat, right? I know he had a chicken hat. Do you have a frog hat too? Or just the chicken hat? Somehow I can visualize him in a frog hat. But it must only be the chicken hat. Yeah, that's a good look. Maybe I just somehow remember this being a frog. Man, it's a good look. We can have a uh, international money laundering scheme through Twitch. Or oh, through heat. We'll use heat to launder money. Smart. Okay, uh, what am I even doing? We need to do this. We don't need any of this stuff. Get all this out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Oops. we called all these things. That's right. I need an app ID. Do you think my app ID is secret? I'm gonna say no since this is designed to be front-end code. Um, let me momentarily switch away from this because you know how I love to show secret API keys on stream. You know that's one of my favorite things to do. But just for this once I think I'm not gonna uh, where do I find that? Oh, my app ID is just was already on screen. Never mind. It was already on it was already on screen. I don't have to do anything. I yeah, the guy who just sent them fake invoices, like millions of dollars, if he was less greedy, he would have probably gotten away with it, right? He wasn't he up to like 120 million dollars or something? If if he had settled for less. Okay. So I assume there'll be some kind of callback when we're good here. Hmm. So first we have to authenticate with the database. This is, I don't want to do any of this, whatever. It was just more, more trouble than I really wanted. Um, but that's okay. I wanted to do all this on the server side, but guess what? It's serverless. Okay, what did I do wrong? did everything wrong. What do, what do I normally do here? Why can't I remember this, right? 
Is this not my normal strategy? I feel like I, I don't even know if people do this anymore. Really? That has to be after? I thought that wouldn't execute yet. Okay. So we got authenticated. So we are now authenticated with Mongo. Now we can do whatever we want, which in this case, all we're going to do is authenticate and then cram in some data. Um, kind of. Because the first thing we need to do I'm not really interested in doing this. Like I would so much like it is so much more my instinct to do this all real time. Like it just feels weird to even bother with the database here. Cause it would we could just do this all all in real time, but that's okay. Okay, so we're gonna insert this. So we gotta remember how this works. I thought I thought the resting stitch face was clever, but then I googled it and it's like everybody does it. Lots of lilo and stitch, but some uh, some knitting, some knitting jokes as well. I like this guy. It's a good look. Kind of into this guy. Do you know that original uh, original jack o' lanterns were? Um, turnips and not pumpkins. And they're super creepy, like super horrifying. This is what they originally looked like. Like nightmare, nightmare for life. Pretty good though. So much creepier than a pumpkin. These little creeps. God, that guy's horrible. Oh man. He looks so angry. Have I seen Lilo and Stitch? I don't think I've ever seen it. No, I don't think so. Lilo, excuse me. Lilo. Why did I say Lilo? Isn't that a uh, Linux thing? Didn't it used to be? Yeah, an old bootloader. This one's called Lilo, right? People don't use this anymore. What do people use now? I can't remember. Some other thing. Grub. Is that what people use? That was like the last time I paid attention, people use Grub. <laughs> Am I pregnant? Oh, wow. Interesting. I didn't realize I had heat on. That's my actual body temperature. It's showing my actual body temperature. Okay, um, so what do we need to do? We need to, we want to just insert Latitude and longitude data. We're gonna know how to do this. Google geolocation API. Is that what it's called? You know this weird thing about this API is that um, it's not just uh, it's not just about the GPS in your device. Part of the accuracy that Google uses to track you is that when the Google Maps van drives you around, it also is mapping the uh, the Wi-Fi signal strength, so that in addition to any hardware you have, like a GPS, it can use um, triangulation based on the signal strength of Wi-Fi access points, which is pretty cool. What did you win? You you win by making me turn off heat. 
Um, so I probably need an, but I don't really, I, I thought you could just ask the browser now. Oh, this is to ask Google. This is not what I want. I want like, I thought it was called the geolocation API though. This. So you have to like ask somebody though. So like first we'll wait for the client to authenticate and then we will ask. You people, you people. You're drinking absinthe? Did you switch to absinthe from the energy drinks? Um, oh, I didn't do that correctly at all, did I? That was weird. You're distracting me. That should be Navigator. I just switched the wrong thing. Okay, so if we say yes to this, we should get latitude and longitude coordinates to like an insane degree of fidelity. So. Once we get that, we will insert it, yes. Draclin, look, it worked. Draclin, thank you. Topaz, welcome. How are you? Draclin is crazed with chocolate. He's on like a multi-day chocolate bender. He's throwing, throwing subscriptions out left and right. He's making obscene jokes. He's basically lost control. So, man, look. Everybody has so many icons. What other icons are possible? How many how many icons can you have? How do I do that? If I go to like um, channel settings, is that where I make icons and stuff? Affiliate button. I have, okay, so I can have a moat. I can have one emote. Is this a secret? I'm Scott M2. That's a dumb emote name. How'd I get stuck with such a dumb emote? Okay. Scott M2. I gotta have a new channel. Yeah, maybe it's time. You're all still in the chokey, as far as I'm concerned. Um, zero of one. But where are the uh, badges? We gotta make some badges. But not today, today's not the day. How to get stuck with Scott M2. Okay, so now look, we have my, oh man, I probably shouldn't show this on screen, should I? That's like my exact location. Oops. Uh, nobody look at that. Oops. I was even talking about how I wanted to uh, obfuscate that. Let's see how accurate it is. Okay, that's not quite right. That's relatively close though. Why are you why did you alert to talk to somebody else? Why why are you alerting to talk to Topaz? He doesn't get alerts. Um okay. Well, that that location with is within several blocks of me. So if you wanted to come murder me, you could use um that location, and then just look for the roofers. Weirdly, it's very accurate on one axis and not very accurate on the other axis for whatever reason. Oh, 
Oh no, now that, oh no, now that Topaz is subscribed, he can also do alerts. Alerts are just gonna go away. Alerts are just gonna be gone. Does the other stuff still work? Uptime, does that stuff work? Here's the main thing. How about this? Alerts cost $1. 100 bits per alert. <laughs> okay, we'll do it, but not today. Um, okay, so I just doxed myself on stream, so that's good, but nobody seems to mind. And fortunately, the accuracy from Wi-Fi was not as, um, not super duper accurate but definitely in the neighborhood. Uh, okay, so let's, we can now stick in, what, hits? I don't like that this is refreshing every time. That's actually not great. It's just gonna keep I'm trying to insert stuff in the database on every click. Okay, so we will get, this is a little weird, it's like, multi-layer nested callbacks, but that's okay. Okay, so now anybody that goes here should have their data <laughs> Maybe everybody gets like a budget of alerts. It's not even like you see the message from the alert. It's not even like... <laughs> it's fine. Alerts are fine. Maybe I just need a noise that stresses me out a little bit less because I've been conditioned by years you know, con conditioned by Metal Gear to be, uh, to be stressed out and traumatized. I could switch it to the uh, enemy has seen you sign in Sekiro and then I will just have a heart attack on stream. Okay, so I believe every time I hit refresh, I should be sticking data in the MongoDB. So if I go look at values, no. Do you th is it, I wonder if there's a way that I can see the contents. Okay, I can see these inserts. The users are anonymous. Insert one just must be some built-in function. How, can I not just like browse, browse the data? Is that a thing you can do? Is that like a Mongo thing? Maybe not. I should pay you. Don't worry. I would imagine most people on YouTube just skip my videos anyway. The Great Scott sound clip? That one you ought to pay. That one's a thousand bits. Okay. Um, does this seem right? Does this seem normal that I can't see data in a cluster through the web interface? That seemed like a thing. If I look in the collections, can I just see, can I just see that? I'm clicking this button and nothing's happening. So there it goes. Would have been nice to show some kind of indicator. Um, okay, great. Here is my very private location data. If I keep refreshing, I should continue to, okay. So, let 
I wonder if there's some standard way. I misspelled obfuscate. Um, I just don't want to be too accurate, you know? I would prefer to like deliberately add some fuzziness to this because especially if I'm going to be showing stuff on stream. So I wonder if there's just some standard way to do it. I mean, I could just round it. Metal detector guy. Man, do I have to compete with metal detector guy? Maybe I can uh, geolocate metal detector guy. I do not want to read this person's thesis. What would be a good way to do this? Should I just round it? Like just lop off some decimal, decimal places? I don't know why I cannot type obfuscate. I can barely say it. Yeah, trim to two decimals. That's kind of weird that the people's questions are like, well, why do you want to do that? That's not very helpful. These are not useful. What, a, what is, which stack exchange is this? Geographic information systems? These are not helpful replies. Like this is a legitimate question. Like if there's some standard of how to add a little bit of fuzziness to geographic coordinates, I feel like that is a legitimate question. And then those people like did not respond with anything useful. Topaz, have a great night. Farewell, or day, or whatever it is. Appreciate you stopping by. Is it a Twitch developer? No, the Twitch developer would have said, uh, per, per the documentation. Specializes in location obfuscation. I mean, I don't need it that fuzzy. Is I just want like some confirmation to say like yes, it is standard practice practice to round. Maybe this Stack Overflow is gonna save me. Just regular old Stack Overflow. Hmm. course I don't even know what stack of float what's what are we even talking about here like what are we am I missing the thing that would tell me what it's just like just a general Android question this seems a little weird okay but actually that gives me an idea because maybe maybe in a navigator geolocation we can ask for course. Is the currency chocolate? Oops. I 
I hate that. Google, why do you return results that do not have all the things I'm searching for? Why? Why? I clearly want this because I typed it. And then it says like, even when I say explicitly, yeah, add that thing. Now it's like, here it is, except not that thing. High accuracy. So are those? Optional parameters passed to get current position. Looks like it'll take a call back and then also an error and then also this. Position options. So position optioned, I want to be like as not accurate as possible. It does default to false, which is good. I just want to add a little noise. What is the accuracy anyway? Like, what is the, uh... yeah, I mean, this is so reasonable. It's like, yeah, I want accuracy at one kilometer. Like, I feel like these are reasonable things to do. And I feel like this documentation isn't really helping me out. And it doesn't even come back and tell me what the accuracy is once I get position. It just gives me the position. Like I would hope that it would give me some sort of indication of how accurate that is, but no. Draclan is a master of environmental art using um, Magicka, Magicka the Gathering Voxel, or whatever that thing's called. Disable accuracy. It's not what I said. Ten meters. Well, let's just try this. Um, is this right?
I need to play TTR. No, Draclan and Draclan's gonna or you and Draclan are gonna start a guild in uh, EverQuest. It's gonna be great. Okay, how inaccurate is this? Maybe adequately inaccurate. That seems reasonable to me. Just rounding to two decimal places, I think I'm gonna call, cause that's within a mile-ish. What if it was only rounded to one decimal place? Problem is that, like, that's so inaccurate that it's kind of potentially another city. So let's stick with two for now and then maybe revisit that. Can you have guilds? Are there guilds? Okay. Um, so, who is ready to dox themselves? Draclan, will you go? Uh, anybody go to this address, but know that you're. Gi okay, by going to that address, you are giving me your location. So don't. You're, you're giving me a location within like a mile. Uh, a mile or so of your house. So don't do it if you don't want me to know where you are. And then how are we gonna view this? So normalizing, how do you normalize? I think one is out of 360 and one is out of... Uh... That's what I should do. I should normalize it before I send it. But I thought one went to 360 and one went to 180. Am I misremembering that? Or it goes from negative 180 to positive 180. Like what's the actual... range. Draclan is your new favorite person? He hasn't been your favorite person this whole time? Where's that uh, position object? Is that what we need to know? We need a position. I just don't, I don't think I know the normal decimal degrees, but it's, is it between negative 180 and positive 180? Like what is the range? Latitudes range from 0 to 90. Longitudes range from 0 to 180. That doesn't seem right. Oh, that's if you give it north, south, east, west. But that's not what we want. So it can be negative 90, positive 90. Um, yeah, latitude. So let's... Uh, one way or the other... Let's normalize this. So, latitude is gonna equal latitude plus 90. That doesn't seem right. What were the values I was just getting? Plus 90. So I guess it's plus 90 to negative 90. Okay. So 
we will just add 90 and then divide that by out of 180, right? And then longitude will do the same thing, but add 180 and divide out of 360. Is this correct? Okay. Now everybody has to go to that web page again after I delete all the data because it's going to be wrong. How do I delete all the data? Can I just throw this away? And then I have to recreate the collection? There's probably a way to delete that without doing that, but here we are. Wait, why would I have a negative value here? That doesn't seem right. How could that have been negative? What? Longitude equals longitude plus 180 divided by 360. You're at the number one, you're, you're, you are your number one favorite person. Congratulations. That's a good way. It's a good way to be. Um, what is my problem here, everybody? If I had negative 122 and I add 180 to that, it should be a positive number. And then I'm dividing that number. What? What dumb math thing am I doing? That should be negative 122 plus 180, so I'd have like, whatever, 58? I'm making mathematical mistakes. Negative 122. Is this some dumb thing where it's like do I need, to, well, I'm making it a fixed. What is my problem? He is turned off because people were abusing it. Oh. Because it doesn't, well, why would this be true? Does two fixed not? I thought two fixed would return a number. Oops. Does two fixed not return a number? Oh, do I need to like parse first? Well, that's kind of weird. I would have expected that to already do the thing. Like, I would have expected to fixed to already do the cast. But, it doesn't? It seems to not. Let's try this. Why? 
What is my problem? Is two fixed? Does two fixed actually return a string? Is that my problem? It is. It's a, it's a string. Good grief. Why? So I had to do that and then turn it into a number after doing that? Doesn't seem weird. Doesn't two fixed seem like it should return a number? Okay. This is, so we're doing this by rounding that. That's probably all okay. Okay, so these, we should now have normalized values. So I'm mostly north, but not very west. Which that doesn't really seem right. Oh, well this is probably, this is relative to the international date line, right? Not to GMT. So then that probably is right. Okay, cool. So, Ooh, like a dad joke. Should you eat ice cream for lunchtime? Have a have a healthy and balanced uh, snack like Draclin, which is chocolate and bananas. Okay, so display comments will be the way that we will show once we're authenticated. We'll find them all. And then iterate through each document. So I'm not used to the uh, to the lingo here. So that is all geolocation world. That whole thing. And that's if somebody else wants to participate. This will all be. So find everything, make it into an array, then that syntax is a little weird. I've never seen that. Seems weird. Hmm. So after that, you get it. And then do a docs.map. Oh, weird. Oops. Uh, this syntax is feeling a little foreign. Because I don't have anything called worldwide comments. We have uh, hits. Okay, here's everybody's latitude. Some far away latitudes there. I don't know, Pikachu's like gritty now. The detective Pikachu got that, got that gritty uh, Ryan Reynolds voice. No longer cute. Okay, so this is the thing. Man, I don't. This is weird. I don't really understand this. Create a new array. Yeah, so okay, it goes through and does all that, which I don't really want to do. We just want to iterate over it. So we want more like a What's our what's our friend now? Every? No. We want like a just a each, right? For each. So once we have our documents.
These will all be hits. And then each of these should be a latitude and longitude object. Yeah, okay. Interesting, Draclan. I know it was you, Draclan. I know it was you. How could I verify that? Like, how could I validate that in a way that would not be easy to override? That's why I kind of wanted to do this all server side. I mean, I guess we just throw away data that looks bad. We'd want to be able to sign it with some key, but if the client key... Um, if the client had the key, you could sign and send whatever you want. Like, how do you get around that? What? What piece? What piece am I missing? Draclan, I hope you didn't type all of the code to do that. I hope you just went to the glitch page and just edited the code. Or did you, like, hand type everything to insert that in the database? <clears throat> I'd be uh, very dedicated of you. Okay, so let's just make a thing. I have to leave relatively soon. So for every friend, is this right? Something like this? I don't know. Surely I got something in there wrong. Yeah. Uh. Oops. Create element. Cool. It's not class list ought to add. Oh no no, because that's it's just supposed to be a string. And I don't need the dot, do I? No. I didn't make this a color. Okay, and then each of these Okay, so latitude Wait, that's not right Latitude is Y um, times something like this. Well, that's got to be top and left, really, not left and right. And then it's going to be minus. Uh, Math floor, and then it'll be offset by half the width, which we'll just hard code for now. And then we need marker.style.left equals left plus px. The thing I always forget, marker.style.top equals left, oops, 
top plus px. That seems like it didn't work at all. Oh, or is this Draclan's 420 over here that's ruining everything? Could be. What's way down here? Why do I still have negative values? We should have at least two valid things though. Latitude is the height, longitude is the width. Um, what's the word? Overflow? So who is this? I think I need to clean this out again. Is there a way for me to just clean this out? Like, I would like to just... empty this collection without deleting it and re-adding it. But maybe that's easier. Hmm. Draclan, you're out of control with the chocolate. Okay, nothing comes back there. Now we should come back. That doesn't look like me. Oh, I probably have to invert the Y. Right? Because I'm counting from the bottom of the world and browsers count from the top of the world. So I need to invert this. Um. That's right. Get that value, invert it, round it. That seems not right. What did I do wrong? So I'm gonna get the, oh wait, that was the, psh, that was the longitude. I need to do the latitude. Right. Oh man, that really seemed like it was a good idea. No, this isn't right. I just need to invert the latitude. That's all. This is the math. That's the math. Okay. That's probably the United States, right? Where's that map that we had? Oops. Sorry for hitting the microphone. Um, do I need help? I always need help. But... I can generally figure things out. Okay, I think there's a Wikipedia one, right? We just need some, uh, some kind of map. Some nice echo rectangular map. Yeah, this one. Can I just use this? Uh, how do I get the height to be correct? Cause that's all that's gonna matter, really. No, it's gonna be wrong. We'd have to do it based on the height and then know the actual width. So instead of doing it based on window, we would do it based on the, the size of this, but that's fine. Um, so to start with, we'll just make this like. Yes. 
It hurt your ears when I bumped the microphone? Excuse me. I just turned the bot off. You, you just lost, lost alert privileges. Now I won't know if anything happens. Okay, so now we need to actually add this somewhere, right? Um, position absolute. And in here we need a div. Let's make it an ID map instead. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not what I want at all. I just put a no repeat in here. Stretch or fill? Oops. Fix center. I think it would be easier for me to keep these as separate things. Okay. Maybe? Well, that's tiny. Is there a size? Background size cover. Okay, and then you want and then we need to do this based on client width of map. And then this is gonna be yeah. Instead of this, it'll be map dot client width. I don't know if that's correct. Well, now I'm in the Gulf of Mexico. That wasn't the Gulf of Mexico at all. That was like Baja, Baja Peninsula. Okay. Um, what's my problem here? I don't actually want position center. I want position top left, now that I think about it. Which I think is maybe the default. That looks correct on one axis, but not the other. And that's because I have an extra R right here. Well, that seems very wrong. This seems too, like, too wide. Nine sixty-five forty. It's not sixteen by nine. It's half. Um, four four fifty four eighty. This isn't seem like it's working correctly. It looks like it was two to one. That's normally what a rectangular would be. Oops. Oops, I didn't mean to close that window. It is an SVG that I stole from Wikipedia.
in can I just not have this as like fill or whatever? Oh, this seemed correct. Why is this cropping? Okay. So, 6.5, well, longitude seems just incredibly wrong. Because I have the width and height backwards. Right? Yes, okay, hooray. Uh, I just turned, heat was off. I just turned it back on. Okay, so, so, Life Fishers, will you try to go to this website again? This website? I need to leave very soon. But I think we, I think we got it. Problem is, every time I refresh, I'm just adding noise. I'm like adding additional points there. Whoa, who lives over here? Okay, I see life is yours. Who lives, um... What is that coordinate? You have been hacked by Draclan. Please send chocolate. Draclan, I didn't, I'm not avowing, I'm not doing an eval on everything. Maybe I should. Hacked by Draclan yet again. How can I get out of that without like a secret key? Draclan lives on the North Pole. It's a little known fact. Um, how could I like, how could I really validate this in a way? Because any anything I send to the server, even if I have a key, it'll be like, cool. But like, you could just sign whatever you wanted. In fact, I'm pretty sure you could do that with, with heat. I think you could figure out how to sign those packets and, and still inject whatever you wanted into heat. What now? Draclan, will you add a real click so I can just tell if this is working? Longitude one, mm -hmm. perfect. So, I gotta stop injecting out of here uh, I mean this just feels a little annoying like all the stuff of getting the location and stuff like that I really would have preferred to do server side just so I don't have to worry about injecting or dealing with injected nonsense um how could I not I mean I could just like try to make sure like hey this looks valid like it's it is an integer and it's normalized and whatever. I could probably do that based on, what if you have a trigger before something technically goes into the database? Like does a trigger get run before or after it's actually created the document? Lorian, what are you alerting about? Um, That's what I'm wondering is if the trigger, you can run triggers. I just don't know if those triggers would happen prior to like being added. So in other words, saying like, hey, do you do, oh, you can do it on an insert. So can you just discard something, I wonder? Like validate as part of a trigger and then discard it if it doesn't seem any good, seem good server side. I would, what I would like to, to I, I would, I just don't know how to do this. Maybe there's some way to do it, but like validate the packet to know that it's 
legit. But I don't know that you really could. I feel like it's always going to be nonsense. Because I would, I would assume, I think a trigger, I mean, I may be wrong, but I would assume an insert trigger would mean it's already been added, you know? Like it's already in there. And then I could maybe mess with it and decide to discard it. And there's valid, I, there's validation I can do, but the validation is just going to be, um, hey, did this come from the client? But if you're if you're like injecting bad code or bad values into the client, then we kind of did that with heat though, where I made sure everything was an integer and I made sure it was normalized and whatever, and it would throw away values if they were bad. We just can't do that here, I don't think. Oh, I know how, I know how we could do it. What we would have to do is, um, instead of calling a, a, a uh, uh, an insert, where do we do that? Instead of doing this insert, we would create a custom function and then we would do our validation in that function and then not even write it to the database otherwise. We'd like write through the function that makes sense. So we would do like, we would call a serverless function basically to do the thing. Find a function, call a function. I wonder what you can do inside there. Can I insert something in the database inside? Yeah, you can get a call default client. So presumably on this client, um, no, this is calling the function. Wait, that's not what I want. I would need to, maybe you can't do what I want, which is have a way to insert something Can I like insert stuff in the function though? I feel like this documentation is like a wild goose chase. Like I'm just constantly going in circles trying to figure out the... Uh... What is this important GIF that I've been sent? Oh no, oh no. One ninety two dot one sixty eight dot zero dot one. That's usually my address, but it's not anymore because my uh, my Google Wi Fi weirdly defaults to something else. Mine is like one ninety two dot one six eight dot eight six because that is a is that class A or class C? Is that class C? These are all class C. Oh uh, yeah. I don't know why everybody uses 192.168 though. Or is it only, I forget because the mask only lets you get part of it. Maybe that is all you can really have. Uh, Lorian, that's an IP address. It's like your computer's address. And when, if it starts with 192, it's just a fake address kind of that is used at your house, not your real address on the internet. So that's why a lot of people would have the same one. And that's generally 192.168.0.1 would be like your router or your Wi-Fi access point, unless you're using some other class of address. I didn't think this was right though. I didn't think this was true. That class C, I thought it was more limited I didn't know that you could do like all of 192. I thought it was like not as open. Let 
but maybe only parts of the, maybe that's what I'm thinking of is the private ranges. Yeah, 192168, right. So, because, right, because this is 24 bits, so it's 10 dot whatever. You can do 10 dot whatever, which I don't, I don't know why people don't use this more. Um, you, I feel like you almost never see class B, 172.16. I feel like sometimes you see that for like loop back, like, like, like if you don't get a real IP address. Um, but I think class C is by far the most common. I see it all over the place. But Google, but it doesn't have to be 1968.0. Sometimes it's 192.168.1. That's something. But Google decided, at least in my case, to do it another different number. But these but i'm not the, those are those are ip addresses we're not that's what i wanted to start with but we can't we can't have ip addresses so this is just actual latitude and longitude and draclin still refuses to participate i'll just have to manually inject some some arizonan data how could i really do this is there any way i don't think there is like any way to like say hey this came from my code versus somebody else's code I don't know how you could do that really because any kind of secret that is client side could be used by somebody else to fake that. Like, is there any, is there any, there's Draclin. How could you know that? Is there a way? Because I feel like the, the whatever you're signing with client side is going to be available to anybody. There's no way. Yeah. <laughs> hello hello to your mom yeah i'm just validated i think all i did was the with heat was just throw away values that didn't seem right but anyway so this works it's kind of boring it's not very interesting but it's pretty easy and it'd be pretty easy to map this to a globe but the thing i want to do is now instead of just putting in your latitude and longitude is like let you do some weird thing like do some weird uh do a weird dance or something and then have your dot do the movements that you did. And then we could visualize it in 3d, maybe visualize it in VR. And then whatever weird things somebody's doing, their little dot could dance around. I don't know if that's a good idea or a bad idea. There's also maybe some, some kind of musical version. I am annoyed that we are having to use that browser geolocation API though. I would have preferred to have some way Here's what we'd have to do, which would not be the end of the world. I would, it would just would have been nice to do it all in Mongo world, but we could easily set up our own, stand up our own little node service that whenever it got hit, it would, it would call the web hook on the Mongo side and insert the data. And then it, it could do the geolocation lookup and all that stuff. And then we wouldn't, we wouldn't have to do this browser based thing. We wouldn't have to worry about bad data being injected. So. Maybe that's the way to do it. Um, you will, you'll, you'll just connect to. I mean, this is more accurate though. Like, if we really wanted to be accurate, I don't know. I have to think about it. I'll have to think about it. But I think if I if I do end up doing something for Mo the Mongo stuff, this will be, this will be the strategy, right? This camera's angle still seems weird. You can see the top of my two monitors right here. Why did the chat turn Russian? What just happened? Okay, so we have some blue dots. What has Draculin done now? Did you draw a nice picture?
I went to the wrong... Oops, sorry. I went to the wrong camera. It was a mistake. I was back here looking to see if Draclon did anything bad. But he didn't. Nothing. No, nothing lewd. Nothing. I don't know. What did you do? Did you do something? I don't know. Were you trying to draw? Well, the duplicates are just because right now I have it every time I refresh the page. It gets duplicated. I don't have anything to discard. Although we could. Um, but I kind of don't want to. I kind of want to have... Um... Here's what. Here, here are some general themes I would maybe like to see. I would like to see some kind of movement. Either based on moving your hand or drawing on the screen or whatever. I would like some kind of interplay between people. Like, I don't know, almost like bouncing a volleyball around. I would maybe like something musical. Or we could do some sort of weird thing where as everybody connected, like some little something would bounce around based on some input that they did. It would almost be like a, I don't know, like a game of telephone or something where, ooh, maybe that's interesting is you could get, okay, I'm not gonna refresh on stream. I'm gonna refresh like this. Beautiful. We've given blue chicken pox to the map. Okay, I have to run because I need to go to a Lorian, why are you alerting for no reason? I'm I'm looking at I'm looking at the chat right now. Um maybe I just need to turn the volume of the alert way down or pick a thing that is not so jarring. Okay. Um thank you for hanging out. Draclin, thank you for gifting subs. That was very kind of you. Um what else? So I think this is a start. I think I can imagine something kind of cool happening with this in VR or AR. Um, maybe it'll be an AR thing. But I want to make it some like connectivity thing. Maybe like every time someone connects, they do a thing and then that gets passed to the next person. Um, I don't exactly know how that's going to play out, but I think it could be kind of fun. We could also connect this to heat in some way. You miss me. I talk to you all day. We talk all day on Discord. How could you miss me? Um... This reminds me of something. What has blue spots? It reminds me of something like maybe like an elephant or something that had blue spots. I don't know. Anyway, uh, you're all lovely, except for when you abuse alert and then then I'm just so angry at you. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll figure something out to do with this, I think. We got to do something for the Mongo contest. That's that's weird and noisy, right? I'm also working on some other projects that are maybe going to use some spatial geolocation data. I'm going to set it up. I got it. I have an idea. Here's the idea. I'm going to set it up. I'm going to um, alter heat so that it has a secret alert backdoor so that I can alert all of you. And then I will just play the alert sound over and over again on your on your computer. Okay. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye, lovelies. I will talk to you soon. Bye. <laughs>